Now that we discuss reactions with beta keto esters, let's take a look at the following example. So in this example, our goal is to provide a reaction mechanism for this particular reaction in which we transform this starting material into this product via these conditions that are given to us. Now, what exactly is the reaction mechanism? Well, to determine what the reaction mechanism is, we have to analyze what the starting material is, what the final product is, and what conditions we have to use to get there. So, the starting material is a beta keto ester. So, we have on the beta position of this molecule, we have our ester as shown. Or, said another way, on the beta position of this molecule, this, we have a ketone. So, we are basically hydrolyzing our beta keto ester under acidic conditions, and then we're gently heating the product to produce this final product our ketone. So basically it's a hydrolysis reaction under acidic conditions to transform the beta keto ester into the beta keto acid and then we take the beta keto acid and we gently heat it to transform it into this ketone as well as a carbon dioxide molecule that is not shown. So let's write the reaction mechanism. So let's begin with the starting material, this molecule, and let's expand this ester group here. So we basically have the following molecule. We have our double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. Here we have our carbon. We also have a double bond here, and we have this methoxy group. So this is our ester part of our molecule. Now, we react it under acidic conditions, so we basically use our hydronium, and the hydronium has a positive charge on that oxygen, and what the hydronium does is it transforms this starting material into a strong Lewis acid by protonating this oxygen here. So basically, these two electrons of the oxygen grab this H of the hydronium, placing the two electrons in this bond onto our oxygen, forming a water molecule as well as the protonated version of this molecule here. We have the methoxy group as well. And we have the water molecule that we're going to need to use in the next step. So basically, in this intermediate, this is a strong Lewis acid. We have a positive charge that is delocalized among this oxygen as well as among this carbon. We have a resin stabilized structure. Now, in the next step, because this is a strong Lewis acid, the water can act as a Lewis base, so it acts as a nucleophile attacking this carbon, displacing the pi bond, placing onto this oxygen, and we form this tetrahedral intermediate. So basically, we have our hydroxy group on one side, we have the water group on the other side, and we have our methoxy group here. So basically, we have a positive charge on this electronegative oxygen. Now, we also form our hydronium. So basic, or actually, we don't form hydronium. Uh, we form just this tetrahedral intermediate because this acts as a nucleophile. Now, in the next step, we want to transform this unstable tetrahedral intermediate that contains a negative charge on the electronegative oxygen. So we want to use a water molecule to basically deprotonate one of this H atoms off of our oxygen. So this water molecule acts as a base, grabbing one of these H's, placing the two electrons onto our oxygen, and now we form a hydroxide. So let's write our, let's draw our hydroxide. And we also form this molecule here, in which we no longer have the positive charge on our oxygen. So we have the hydroxide on this side, 
we have the hydroxide group on this side, and we have our methoxy group. So we remove the positive charge from this oxygen. Now, the entire goal of this hydrolysis is to basically replace this alkoxide, the methoxy group, with a hydroxyl group. So that means we have to kick off this methoxy. Now, in the way that we have drawn it here, this is a poor leaving group, and we have to transform it into a good leaving group by protonating this oxygen and transforming it from our methoxide into a methyl alcohol, which is the good leaving group. So the, this pair of electrons grabs one of the H's off of the hydronium, forming a water molecule as well as a protonated tetrahedral intermediate. So the next molecule that we form basically looks something like this. We have the hydroxy group on one side, the hydroxy group on the other side, and a protonated methoxy. So this is basically our good leaving group and now the elimination reaction can take place to kick off this entire good leaving group. So this step that we so this step here was basically the addition step in which the water added to this carbon. This is the elimination step in which a pi bond is reformed between the oxygen and the carbon, kicking off this, uh, this entire leaving group, breaking this bond between the carbon and oxygen that was made weak as a result of the formation of the positive charge on this oxygen. So in the next step, we have our elimination reaction taking place and we form the protonated beta keto acid. So we basically have this molecule as shown. Now this is not the beta keto acid because it contains this H atom on the oxygen. So Basically, in the next step, we take our water molecule, and the water molecule acts to deprotonate this H off of this oxygen. So here we have our water molecule that acts as the base, attacking this H atom here, grabbing it and pulling it away, placing these two electrons onto our oxygen. So we should have a positive charge on this oxygen, and it's also delocalized. Actually, it's delocalized onto this oxygen here as well. So we have a resin stabilized structure. And finally we form our beta keto acid. So basically we have this ketone group and we also have this carboxylic acid group. And this is what makes it a beta keto acid. So the beta keto acid is not that stable and now if it rotates and then we heat it gently it will undergo the decarboxylation reaction. So if this bond rotates and this hydroxy group moves on to here we basically form the following molecule. So we have our group here. We have the rotation taking place H and we have the double bond that now points downward. And now, if we heat it gently, a decarboxylation reaction will take place. So basically, this pi bond breaks, for, uh, breaks off, grabs this H, this bond breaks off, reforms the pi bond, and this bond breaks off and forms the pi bond here. So we basically form our uh, carbon dioxide, which is this entire section here. So we form this is our oxygen, we form a double bond, so we have our carbon dioxide, and we also form our enol, which is basically our molecule that looks something like this. Now, in the next step, this enol will equilibrate with, with its ketone counterpart, and equilibrium will shift to the ketone side because ketones are more stable than their enol counterpart. So we have a reaction takes pl take place, and under acidic conditions, we basically have a hydronium. We have a hydronium molecule that acts as our uh, acid 
or yeah, it acts as the acid, and this pi bond breaks off and grabs one of the H atoms at the same time. The, these two electrons on the oxygen form a pi bond here, and these two electrons end up on our oxygen. So we form our intermediate between the enol and our ketone that looks like this and we also form our water molecule and in the next step the water will basically act to deprotonate this H. So on this molecule we have a positive charge on the oxygen and it could also be delocalized onto this carbon so we have a resin stabilized structure. In the final step we have so we basically have these two electrons grab the H, placing our two electrons here, and we form the final product, our ketone, as well as the H that is formed here. So the H that is placed onto this carbon, so we have two H's here. So we see that this is the final molecule, our ketone, that is formed by following that decarboxylation reaction. So in the first step, we take this beta ketoester, we hydrolyze it under acidic condition to produce the beta keto acid, it then rotates and we heat it gently to produce the carbon dioxide as well as our ketone, which basically equilibrates with our enol. But because ketone is more stable than the enol, the ketone at equilibrium will predominate over our enol counterpart.